Magandang araw po sa inyo. Welcome po sa isa na namang episode ng online series ni Inang Pamantasan kung saan ang pagkatuto ay walang hangganan. Ito ang PNU Talks. Ako nga pala si Eric Atilano mula sa BS Ecology Guidance and Counseling Stream Batch 2012 at ako ang inyong learning from home buddy sa episode na ito. Today, we will talk about addiction and recovery. I-comment ang inyong mga katanungan at mga kurukuro tungkol sa ating episode ngayong araw. Huwag rin kalimutang i-like at i-share ang episode natin. Let's start! Ano nga ba ang addiction? Addiction is defined as a chronic relapsing brain disease that is characterized by compulsive drug seeking and use despite harmful consequences. It is considered a brain disease because drugs change the brain. They change its structure and how it works. These brain changes can be long-lasting and it can lead to the harmful behaviors seen in people who abuse drugs. By definition, addiction is chronic because it's long-standing, relapsing because it's recurring. In fact, relapse is part and parcel of the disease process. And of course, brain disease because it is an organ disease much like other organ diseases. P. Woods or persons who use drugs manifest cognitive, behavioral, and physiological symptoms indicating continuous substance use despite harmful consequences. Likewise, a study conducted by Estacio and Ramiro confirmed that persistent and long-term drug use have significant detrimental effects to biological, psychological, and social health and the lives of drug users, their families, and communities. How does addiction behavior develop? Let's talk about the stages of addiction. First is the abstinence. Ito yung state of non-use, usually during early childhood where the person is not addicted to anything. Next is the experimentation stage. This is the phase where the individual becomes curious and experiment on using substances, usually during adolescence. And according to literature, peer influence and curiosity are the main reasons for trying drugs initially. Alam nyo ba, ayon sa pag-aaral na ginawa ng Dangerous Drugs Board, most lifetime users started trying dangerous drugs or substances at the age of 22 years old. Yes, 22 years old po. Lifetime users are those who try drugs at least once in their life. Most lifetime drug users take illicit drugs in combination with smoking and alcoholic drinks. An example of a scenario is they first progress from smoking at the age of 17 no, to drinking alcoholic beverages and at the age of 18. Then they begin to use dangerous drugs and substances at the age of 22. The next stage is the social or recreational use. It is when the person uses substance on occasions or during events. It's the start of the cyclic pattern of substance use. Sila yung madalas na nahuhuli sa mga random drug testing sa workplace after long weekend, holidays, or even long vacations. The fourth stage is the habituation. Here, the person already developed the habit of using drugs. Dito, hindi na nila hinihintay yung occasion or event para gumamit. They now make excuses or even provide reasons no, for using drugs. Kung sa mga manginginom nga, sinasabi nila, na birthday ng kung sino man, no? birthday ng kumpare, ng kaibigan, minsan sinasabi rin nila pampatulog lang, no? at kung ano-ano pang mga lame excuses. Next stage is the substance abuse. For someone to be considered an abuser of substances, maladaptive pattern of substance use leading to clinically significant impairment within a 12-month period in one or more of the conditions such as failure to fulfill major role obligations, recurrent use in situations which is physically hazardous, recurrent substance-related legal problems, and continued use despite social or interpersonal problems. Lastly, dependence stage. The word dependence connotes reliance to the substance of abuse. Maladaptive pattern of substance use in a 12-month period manifested by three or more of the conditions such as Tolerance, withdrawal, unsuccessful attempts to stop, great deal of time spent, and activities given up. In terms of its impact to the person, according to the World Health Organization, no, illegal drugs carry potential harm to its users, whether short or long term. Take note, short or long term. 
may apat ring kategorya ang mga masasamang na idudulot ng illegal na droga. First, it can cause chronic health problems. Secondly, the effect of substance use on physical coordination, concentration, and judgment. For example, people under the influence of drugs pose major safety risks and costs to people around them. The third and fourth categories include the adverse social consequences of the substance use, such as acute social problems and chronic social problems. In addition, those individuals are more likely to be unemployed or underemployed than those who do not use illegal drugs. Now, people with substance use issues and concerns try to engage in some legal income-generating activities but fail to continue it. Maaring ito ang dahilan kung bakit nagagawa ng mga P-Woods na masangkot sa mga illegal na mga gawain gaya ng pagnanakaw, pagsusugal, at pagtutulak ng droga. Can addiction be treated? The answer is yes. Addiction is a treatable disease. Advances in drug abuse treatment help people stop abusing drugs and start leading productive lives. Sa katunayan nga, maraming mga pag-aaral ang sumuri ng epekto ng iba't ibang intervention programs for substance use gaya ng mindfulness-based and cognitive behavioral therapy, maging behavioral counseling. No? All of them demonstrated different levels of effectiveness in reducing substance use and impact behavioral outcomes. Now, uh, let's take a look at the 21st century person that's in recovery today. P-Woods now, now are often more technologically advanced. Hindi na nga rin sila nagpapahuli sa paggamit ng iba't ibang online platforms para magka-access sa illegal na droga. They are also more complex human beings and bottom line thinkers. Sila yung preoccupied with how much money he or she can make from whatever it is. They're younger and many are well-educated and they are culturally and socially diverse. Actually, mahirap na ma-determine at first glance kung sino ang recovering sa normal individuals. They are either in the workforce, in school, or engaging in businesses. But I have to clarify that not all POs or people in recovery have the same severity and status. Iba-iba rin po ang intervention na ibinibigay sa kanila. Halimbawa, kung ang PWOD ay may low risk, pwede na ang general intervention para sa kanila like brief interventions, individual and family programs, health and psychoeducation, or psychosocial and spiritual support programs and services. For moderate risk or may mild dependence, community-based drug rehabilitation programs are provided by the local government. Kung ang PWOD naman ay may moderate dependence or with risk who has co-occurring psychiatric or medical comorbidities, Facility-based outpatient interventions ang mainam na intervention para sa kanila. Kung ang PWOD naman ay may severe dependence, facility-based inpatient interventions ang nararapat para sa kanila. Pero kung sila ay may severe co-occurring psychiatric or medical co comorbidities, sila ay inaasahan na ma-refer sa specialized facilities like mental health facilities. As recovery coaches, we need to provide our clients with a with a roadmap, no, a course of action that is based on sound recovery principles practiced by most of recovering people over the years. Actually, our role is simple, eh, to offer them strategies that can accelerate recovery and help our clients replace their self-defeating, addiction-based habits with newer and healthier ones that address body, mind, and spirit. A holistic and positive approach towards full recovery. Ano nga ba ang recovery? The SAMHSA or uh, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration released this working definition of recovery which supports the paradigm shift we've been discussing. No? Recovery is a process of change through which individuals improve their health and wellness, live a self-directed life, and strive to reach their full potential. SAMHSA also listed four dimensions that support a life in recovery, which are health, home, purpose, and community. Recovery coaches can support their clients in exploring these areas and setting reasonable goals. Yung unang taon can be a time of doubt for those in recovery. Nagsisimula na nilang madiscover yung saya na dulot ng pagbabago, that their lives are beginning to make sense once again. They can finally view the world clearly and are better able to explore life for its possibilities, joy, good health, and inner peace. 
ito ay ibang iba sa kanilang mga buhay bago nila sinubukan yung mga programa para makatulong sa kanilang pagbabago. No? Ang kanilang buhay noon ay puno ng sakit, pagkatalo o trahedya. But they're also beginning to feel doubtful about their ability to sustain this sobriety. And that maybe willpower alone may not be enough to get them through the tough times. Actually, this is understandable as many clients hold the, the belief that they will mess up anything good. And this is really happening to them. Now, let's talk about the obstacles to recovery. An obstacle prevents a person in recovery from getting from point A, where the client is today, to point B, where the client wants to be tomorrow. Obstacles can be external or physical, where the obstacles come from no, the environment itself, such as lack of employment, lack of transportation, lack of housing or medical care, or even basic life resources. Obstacles can also be internal or personal, which include emotional, no, spiritual, and mental issues, such as confidence, no, your lack of confidence or self-esteem, or even your academic skills. Based on my professional experience, mental and emotional barriers such as shame and self-doubt are the most challenging to address in the recovery process. This is the recovery model that uh, I'd like to highlight, no? the whole life recovery. Facilitating whole life recovery means that we address the mental, emotional, physical, social, and spiritual states of being. Maybe some of you would say, dati na namin alam yung mga elements na yan, ah. No? But when these are integrated and kept in balance, no? which is fundamental part of recovery, it provides us with the recovery capital needed to help us become more resilient against addiction. P. Woods will need to look at the five areas of life no? as a way to understand and conceptualize their situation. It must be holistic. So for some of you na may kakilala, kaibigan o kapamilya, maaari natin silang tulungan sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng suporta sa mga nabanggit na aspeto. We are using the term whole life recovery which recognizes that many universal traditions emphasize five elements which are critical to recovery and which include all aspects of wellness that promote a sense of balance and promote a lasting healthy lifestyle. The combination of these five elements no, is synergistic and works to revitalize and balance our bodies. But it takes a positive view of the persons in recovery to provide them with the opportunity to explore an alternative set of beliefs about themselves. No, By, uh, by focusing on the recovery capital they have built up in these five areas as they begin solving their own problems. As defined, recovery capital is the breadth and depth of one's internal and external resources, which can be drawn upon no, to initiate, nurture, and sustain recovery. In whole life recovery, building recovery capital is about moving forward and being in a constant state of change. A person is committed to recovery is ever evolving from a state of active addiction to a state of physical, mental, emotional, social, and spiritual wellness. Kung naisip nyo yung mga kilala ninyo na nalulong sa ipinagbabawal na gamot, hindi ba nakakatuwang makita sila na maayos sila sa mga aspeto ng buhay nila? Whole Life Recovery teaches that we are all part of one human community as well as part of a natural system. When an individual's life is whole, it is possible to be in harmony with that system. Full recovery is not just about staying off of addictive substances. It is about building up recovery capital in all five life elements to build up strength, to maintain sobriety, and make positive life changes. Isa-isahin po natin ang mga elemento na ito upang mas mapalalim pa natin ang mga kaalaman no? sa pagtulong sa mga taong nais magbago mula sa pagkalulong sa pinagbabawal na gamot. Pag-usapan rin natin kung paano makakatulong ang mga recovery coaches sa kanila. The physical element refers to the physical body, including the brain. The body is possibly addiction's first casualty. When addiction becomes the focus of one's life, hygiene suffers, and one's life becomes dominated by cravings. As the immune system becomes compromised, some people experience near-death experiences 
while others actually die. Hindi talaga madali ang pagbabago mula sa addiction. Halimbawa na lamang ang pagtigil sa paninigarilyo. Marami akong kakilala na sumubok tumigil pero nabigo rin kinalaunan. Kung kayo po ay may kakilala na sumubok tumigil sa pagyoyosi, ngunit sila ay nabigo rin naman, no? Uh, maari ba ninyong itanong gaano kahirap labanan ng cravings? Tapos, i-multiply po ninyo yung kanilang experience by 20. Yun ang nararanasan ng mga people in recovery. Our task as recovery coaches is to guide our clients through a process of exploring ways of building recovery capital in the physical element, including proper nutrition and minimum hours of sleep so the brain can have time to heal. Mas kailangan ng katawan nila ngayon ang pahinga at wastong nutrition. We do all this by helping them outline a plan that can take back good health and maintain physical stability. There are some who do not normally think of exercise as being important to recovery, but those who get in the habit of exercising report that it energizes them in ways they never could have predicted. And for some, exercise has certain spiritual qualities that seem to enhance other areas of their lives, such as greater emotional balance and mental growth. Naaalala pa ba natin yung mga drug surrenderers na pinagzuzumba bilang bahagi ng kanilang programa para sa pagbabago? Baka naman ito ang kanilang mga dahilan. Next, the mental or cognitive element, which is comprised of our ability to think and reason. It consists of our thoughts, beliefs, and values. It is the foundation on which recovery culture is built. Na? Ang mga P. Woods, no, noong sila ay gumagamit pa, tila sila ay na-hijack ng droga na nagdulot ng malabo o blocktot na pag-iisip. Isipin ninyo na kayo ay lasing na lasing, uh, na halos wala na sa ulirat. Then multiply your experience by 20. Yun ang nararanasan ng mga P-Woods. They lived in a perpetual state of confusion as their mental recovery capital was depleted. Their thinking became irrational and choices become limited. Combine this with values being out of sync with reality and one can see the horrendous personal, spiritual, social, and legal problems that addiction can cause. Through recovery coaching, however, clients can be taught numerous ways of building recovery capital by challenging their distorted thinking patterns and beliefs. Recovery coaches also provide reality checks until our clients pick up the habit of challenging and fact-checking their own thoughts and assumptions. As the mind becomes clear, clients become stronger and can better understand that their former addiction cannot define who they are as individuals and that each has the inner capacity to adapt new and healthier ways of looking at the world. This cognitive element maintains a sense of the present as well as a look towards a future and how to build a better life. Moving forward, let's talk about the emotional element. It is part of us that seeks out meaningful contact with others. Ang mga P-Woods noon na noong sila ay gumagamit pa, no? tinalikuran o iniwasan ang mga uh, anumang kaugnayan sa kanilang mga mahal sa buhay. Kapag sila ay gising, no? animoy obsessed o hayok sila sa paggamit ng droga. The truth became blurred or lost as lies and false justifications were made. Lying, cheating, stealing, and distorting the truth was a necessary part of their addictive process. If you know someone who was involved in this kind of activity, maybe a family member, no, relatives or friends, I believe you have the idea of what I'm talking about here. Recovery coaches can show clients how to use personal journaling as a way to put their thoughts and feelings on paper and to sort out their turbulent thoughts and externalize emotions without acting them out. Next is the social element. Ang mga P-Woods noong sila ay gumagamit pa, madaling makakapagpalit yan ng mga kaibigan at mga madalas na sinasamahan, no? yung mga katulad din nila na mas pinapahalagan pa ang paggamit ng ipinagbabawal ng kamot kaysa sa mga mahal nila sa buhay. Recovery is about moving into a new mental state, a new neighborhood if you will. I remember when I conducted an addiction counseling program in Parola, Tondo, ang sabi nila sa akin, no, paano naman kami makakaiwas sa paggamit ng legal na droga? Eh, paglabas pa lang namin, nandiyan na nakaabang na yung mga barkada namin, mga kaibigan, na magyayaya no, na gumamit. 
ng ipinagbabawal na gamot. Sa kanila noon ay talamak ang yayaan, no? Yayaan ng pag-score o paggamit ng droga. Kasi sila sila mismo no, sa komunidad ay mga lulong na sa ipinagbabawal ng gamot. Kaya naman, yung iba talagang pinipiling umuwi sa kanilang mga probinsya o nagpupunta sa ibang lugar para makaiwas na at tuluyan ng makapagbagong buhay. They need to look for a new neighborhood with a culture of shared values that are positive and which support sobriety and enhance social well-being. It is about building caring relationships with others and engaging in activities that promotes pro-social character and behavior. Being with people who are glad to be us can mean the difference between just staying sober and entering into sustained personal growth. It is about belonging in the human community, social reintegration. For the spiritual aspect, much like our uh, moral compass, it is or it should be part no, of who we are. It is the place that extends beyond time and space. It's about who I am and why am I here and speaks of purpose and destiny. It is not necessarily a religion, but it can be. It is a spiritual centeredness within us that says, we are all a small part of something greater than we are. Ang mga P-Woods noong sila ay gumagamit pa, sila ay naging malayo sa kanilang Diyos, Panginoon o higher power at naging malapit na lang sa paggamit ng illegal na droga at wala nang inatupag kung hindi paano sila maging high sa droga. Spiritually bankrupt people have in essence lost their moral compass even their sense of humanity as they become more manipulative and even predatory. People who are addicted to illegal drugs make so many poor choices in their compulsion to use that they will soon veer off the path and win up in a ditch. To sum it up, we have talked about the addiction, which is defined as a chronic relapsing brain disease, including the stages, signs, and symptoms of addiction and its impact to the P. Woods. Then we have discussed the recovery, particularly the whole life recovery concept and the five life elements. So if this connection from all five life elements and the purpose for being was a problem while addicted to illegal drugs, then reconnection is part of the solution for stability and sobriety. Intellectual and spiritual thinkers have stated that life is about moving forward not backwards. In order for humans to live productive lives, the totality of the five life elements must be nurtured, appreciated, and kept in balance. So if a person has disconnected himself for these five life elements through addiction, then it makes a lot of sense to try and regain what was lost and to become whole again, or maybe for the first time. That would be all. Let me thank you for listening and I hope I was able to provide you valuable insights on addiction and recovery. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pagkakataong makapagbahagi ng aking kakaunting kaalaman sa PNU community. Special shout out to my classmates, BS Ecology Class of 2012. Sa muli, ako si Erika Tilano at sumayin ang PNU Talks.